fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! I send you on the trail ahead! Well, Silver! Black clouds scudded across the night sky. Wind whipped along the border like a surf lashing the shore and swept north with countless whirlpools of prairie dust. Shivering in the wintry blasts, a herd of longhorns huddled closer together and bawled plaintively. The waddies detailed to guard them blew into their cupped hands and ducked their heads against the dusty onslaught. Watch them calves, Lefty. If they stray from the herd, we'll never find them in this dust. Yeah. Can't keep the sand out of my eyes. I'll be glad to get back to the bunkhouse. Lefty, look. What? Prairie fire. Holy cats. The wind's blowing it this way. Wait for the cattle. And the ranch buildings, too. Get the boys. we got to hit it up. Get up there. As the Waddies raced to the ranch house for aid to combat the fast-spreading flames, the small, shrewd eyes of two men who watched them go flickered with amusement. They pulled their hat brims over their faces to shield them from the sandstorm, then looked again at the now-roaring prairie fire they had started. <laughs> they won't stop that blaze in a hurry, Barney. <laughs> you said it, Spade. You got the wind with us, too. Yeah, and a dust blizzard. Just to make it harder for them cowpokes to put it out. It'll take dust about every hand they got to fight the fire. Yeah. Even them that's guarding the cattle. As soon as they're all busy with the blaze, Leif and the boys will rustle the steers. <laughs> Lighting a grass fire is the best decoy we've hit on yet. Yeah, ain't no way they can meet it. Uh, what is it coming back? Bringing size to cut the grass. Look back there. Ain't that Leif and the boys? <laughs> yeah, that's him. They're splitting up to stampede the herd. Bring them sides over here. Cut down the grass. How in thunder do you suppose it started? Oh, I don't know, but it'll take every hand to put it out. Spread out, boys. we got to work fast. What's that? Sounds like gunfire. Rustlers. We're stampeding the herd. We've been tricked, Mac. Yeah. What do we do? Stay here and fight the fire. If them flames reach the ranch, it'll burn like paper. What about the stairs? Yeah, we'll trail them after the fire's out. I'd sure like to get my hands on the polecats and start a prairie fire just to get their crooked fingers on some cash. Come on, come on. 
Sheltered from the dust storm in a cave, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched a faint red glow spread against the black sky. It's a gas fire, Tonto. Ah. How far away would you say it is? Maybe 10, 15 miles. With this wind, it'll take the ranchers hours to put it out. We ride there? Yes, Kimo Sabe. They'll need all the help they can get. Yes, Silver. Come, Scout. Hey, big fella. Huh? All right, big fella. Get him up, Scout. Oh, Silver. Meanwhile, in the back room of the cafe in Border City. Hey, your deal, Barney. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> that idea of yours, Spade. Set the grass fire to call off the guards while Leaf and the boys wrestled the cattle. <laughs> Another <laughs> thing they could do about it either, as long as the wind was blowing the flames toward the range. Yeah, they'll trail <laughs> the stairs as soon as it's out, though. Not more than a few miles. The boys are covering up the trail by driving the herd over a rocky patch. That way, they won't leave tracks. Yeah. Well, I guess Leif will be collecting the cash from that cattle buyer pretty soon. Leif's got a job to do first. What kind of job? Tad Harrison arrives in town this morning. Yeah, no. Heard he went straight to see the sheriff's daughter, Betty. They can't have sweeten each other. He was just let out of the state prison. What about it? Tad was sent up for cattle rustling. Leif testified against him to save his own skin. Yeah, I remember. When the sheriff hears about tonight, he'll suspect Tad. But Tad will have an alibi and put it on Leif's trail. That means our trail. What'll we do? <laughs> Leif's already figured it out. He's aiming to beat Tad to the draw by pinning the blame on him. Oh. Leif's meeting Tad tonight in Silver Basin. Well, that's on the trail where the boys are running the cattle. Yeah. Leif's going to cut about a hundred longhorns from the herd and drive them into the basin. Them steers will trample Tad the kingdom come. You're right away from him. He can't. Silver Basin's a regular pocket. He'd be trapped by rock walls on three sides and a hundred stampeding steers from the other. <laughs> Say, that sure is slick. Yeah, and when the sheriff finds him, he'll figure the Longhorns ran Harrison into the basin while he was rustling them, huh? <laughs> wolfishly overhead as Tad Harrison reined in his horse in Silver Basin. He beat the sand from his sombrero and cotton shirt and waited impatiently for the man he had agreed to meet. Steady, boy. I don't like it any more than you. At least we're not eating prairie dust for a change. I don't know why Leif Stevens has to see me tonight and here of all places. If I hadn't promised Betty I wouldn't, I'd settle accounts with that double-crossing polecat. What's that? Sounds like thunder... Longhorns, coming this way. They're heading in here. As the Longhorns thundered towards Silver Basin, the death trap Leif Stevens had cunningly prepared for Tad, the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced along the same trail near the basin's entrance. Rain over to the side, Tonto. Those tears will run us down. Then come plenty fast. Over Silver, let those Longhorns have the trail. On them, Scout. Here's the basin. Wait in the entrance while the cattle go by. Hold, Silver. Hold, 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 Looks like the bar Z brand, Tonto. That right? Coming from the direction of the fire. I wonder if they... Maybe ranchers drive them here. Save them from fire. Looking to the size of that glow in the sky, I'd say the bar Z needed all hands to stop the flames. Well, how... How cattle get here, then? I don't... Huh? Look there. Tell her fire guns. Cowboys don't do that. They're rustlers. Them stampede some steers this way. They'll tackle us, Toto. Right back into the basin. Get him up, Scout! Into the basin raced the powerful white stallion in the sturdy paint. Behind them thundered a hundred Texas longhorns. We're gaining on them, Toto. Ah. We've got to stop them. This basin has only one outlet. That man up ahead. We can use him. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout! With only seconds to spare, the masked man and his Indian friend rode until they faced a sheer stone wall, then leaped from their horses. The Lone Ranger recognized Tad Harrison and quickly made him a part of his plan. Hurry, cut down the brush with your knives. Keep it in as many piles as you can. Uh. Working against time, the three men raced to the scattered brush, cutting it down and heaping it in piles in front of them. Then they set fire to each of the brush heaps. The cattle are almost here. Uh. They've got to stop. Flames stopping, you see. 
the three men standing with their backs to the wall, the Longhorns seemed to hurl their massive bulks forward for the kill. And the flames from the brush piles leaped into a curtain of fire, shielding the men. Cattle are turning. They're heading back. That was a close one. Say, what, what was that? Look, huh? the man who stampeded the cattle, he's fallen under them. Riding with Tad to where the fallen man lay, the Lone Ranger and Tonto bent to examine the outlaw. Ah, uh, him dead. Why, it's Leif Stevens. Yes, I know. He must have planned that stampede to kill me. That's why he asked me to meet him here. Why would he want to kill you? Why, I don't know. The cattle you saw were part of a herd stolen by Leif and his men from the Bar Z Ranch, Tad. But you know who I am? Yes. That mask. Are you an I'm a... not an outlaw. Tad, you were sent to prison for cattle rustling. Are you connected with this gang? No. Well, when they set me free, I swore I'd go straight. Well, I believe you, but uh, I doubt if the sheriff will. I don't understand. Those steers were driven from the direction of that prairie fire. Yeah, I saw the glow in the sky. It's gone now. Ah. Them may be put out flames. That fire was apparently no accident, Tad. It probably was started by men working with Leif so the gang could steal the cattle. I guess you're right. The sheriff will suspect you as one of them. But it's not true. Well, Leif was friendly with two strangers in town. If they're members of the gang, they probably knew of his plan to kill you. I don't know any strangers. And since you just left jail, the chances are they don't know you. But you've got Dad, to... it'll be necessary for you to stand to cover for a while. Oh, I can't even see Betty. The sheriff's daughter? Yeah. We were planning to be married soon. It won't help your chances if you're jailed for rustling again, Tad. Uh, you're right. Take care of Leif. Come along, Tonto. Uh, what we do now? We'll trail those steers. Uh-huh. Big fella. <coughs> we'll be back soon to take you to our camp, Tad. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Hey, I, I don't even know who you are. You look in saddlebag. Saddlebag? A silver bullet. What? The Lone Ranger. As the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Tad Harrison talked in Silver Basin, the men of the Bar Z Ranch, with the help of neighboring ranchers and townspeople hastily recruited by the sheriff, threw sand on the last flickering flames of the once roaring prairie fire. Fire's just about out, Max. Tell your men to stack them sides, Lefty. The sheriff has a word to say. All right, boys. Drop what you're doing. We got other work to do. Men, you all know this fire was started so a gang of the lowest coyotes you can imagine could rustle the Bar Z steers. Yo, that way now. And when we get our fists on them, we'll teach them what it means to play with matches. Huh, boys? I'm calling for volunteers to trail them hombres right now. Count me in, Sheriff. I reckon he can count us all in. Can he, boy? Yeah. All right, boys, get to your horses and ride. <laughs> Back on the trail, the muscular legs of the great horse Silver and the sturdy scout stretched with powerful strides in pursuit of the stolen cattle. Even in the dark, the herd's hoof prints were easy to follow, though partly obliterated by the sifting sands. Then suddenly they were swallowed up by a five-mile stretch of stone and shale known as Rocky Patch. Oh, 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 I was afraid of this, Toto. Ah, uh, Russell is plenty smart. It would take hours to patrol the rim of this patch and pick up the trail. The way the wind is blowing the dust, the rustlers' tracks will be completely covered before they're found. We hunt anyway? I know, Tonto. I have a better idea. Wait. It's the men from the Bar Z. Ah. Them follow cattle, too. Look, Sheriff! A masked man and an engine! Look, there we are! Come on, Silver! Get him up, Scout! They're riding away! Go let him! They may be the poor catch that started the fire! It's no use, Mac. That white horse is traveling like a streak. Keep on shooting! curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue 
our story. The next day, two figures concealed by the low-hanging branches of a tree crept stealthily to the window of the back room of a cafe. One wore a white sombrero and a black mask. The other was an Indian. Those are the two strangers I saw with the late fellow. Uh-huh. They may be members of the gang. We listen, maybe find out. Yes, come on. No, I'm sick of this waiting, Spade. Yeah, take it easy. We've been gambling here all night. What's keeping Leif? He'll be along. Yeah, suppose he don't come. What do you mean? It'd be easy for him to slip over the border once he collected the cash. I don't like that kind of talk, Bunny. I don't like this waiting either. We risked a noose setting that fire so he could wrestle them cars. I want to see my cut. Yeah, uh, something must have happened, maybe. What? Why, we watched him till he got the kettle clean away. I mean in Silver Basin, while he was stampeding them stairs. Yeah, uh, you're loco. The only thing that could happen in that basin last night happened to Tad. Uh, I reckon you're right. I don't see how Tad could turn the tables, but... But what? I'd feel a lot safer if we knew what that hombre looks like. Just in case he got laid and came gunning for us. Uh, hogwash, Spade, you just... What do you suppose that is? I don't know. Leif wouldn't knock. Want to talk to you two? Oh. Oh, hello, Sheriff. Come on in. You've been in town several days now. Claim you're interested in cattle. We are. Bought any steers? Well, no. Well, the fact is, Sheriff, we ain't found any in these parts worth buying. So you decided to get them another way, huh? What do you mean? 500 prize bars E stock was raided last night. But I guess you boys wouldn't know anything about that, hmm? Nope. Or how that grass fire was started so as to make it easy for the rustlers to run the steers. What grass fire? You've been pretty friendly with Leif Stevens. Ooh, just had a few drinks with him, Sheriff. Suppose you ain't chummy with Tad Harrison, either. Never met the hombre. Appears to me it's more than just an accident. Them steers were stolen the day Tad was let out of prison. Looks to me like Tad and Leif Stevens buried the hatchet to pull this job. I ain't so sure you two weren't in on it. Oh, now you've got us wrong, Sheriff. Well, maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. But I'm keeping an eye on you. Good day, gents. From their place of concealment near the window... The Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the sheriff leave the cafe. Then the masked man turned to his Indian friend. The sheriff is bluffing, Tonto. Uh, he's sure Spade and Barney are connected with the rustlers, but he has no proof. And not give him clue. No. Sheriff, maybe scare him out of town. They won't go far without their share of the cash. Mm, that's right. With Leif Stevens dead, I... Wait. What do you think? We may be able to trick them, Tonto. You got a plan? Yes. It's a long chance, but it may work. What me do? Return to the camp. I'll join you there. Uh, Wish me luck, Kimosabe. Meanwhile, in the back room of the cafe, Spade and Barney hastily conferred. Barney? Yeah? This place is getting a little too warm. We better get to Leif before the sheriff does. Yeah, somebody else's fingers will be on that cash if we don't. Yeah, let's go. Put up your hands. What the? Mashed. Sit down. Good. Who are you? Leif Stevens stampeded a bunch of steers into Silver Basin last night. He thought he could make murder look like an accident. How did you know? I'm looking for the men who helped plan it. Uh, we didn't have nothing to do with it, Missy. No, no, it, it was all Leif's idea. It's the last idea Leif will have. You mean you... He's six feet under. Say, you must be... Who do you think I am? Tad Harrison. Yeah. Well, what's it worth to keep me from turning you over to the sheriff? Why, well, One I... third. Sure, Tad. You can have Leif's share. Who has the cash? Uh, the man who bought the stairs. He was supposed to give Leif the money. Where are the cattle located? That's our secret. Yeah. It may not be unless you act. What do you mean? The sheriff traced the cattle to Rocky Patch. His posse's patrolling the pass to pick up the trail and recapture the steers. How do you know? I saw them. Spade, if that posse recaptures the cattle before we collect the cash, our work will be for nothing. But how we get through Rocky Patch with the posse on guard? By kidnapping the sheriff's daughter. 
What? Going loco, Ted? You want to collect the cash and cross the border, don't you? Sure, then we'll be safe. What's that got to do with it? I get it. To save his daughter's life, the sheriff wouldn't stop us. You mean... He called in his posse and let us travel through Rocky Patch to pick up the cash. What makes you so sure? Because we'll leave a note threatening his daughter with death if she doesn't. Uh, I don't know. Afraid to, Spade? Who's afraid? Chip in, then. Mm, all right. I'm in. Good. We'll draw lots. What for? Spade, there are three strips from this newspaper. Yeah, all right. Hold them while Barney and I draw. The one who draws the shortest strip will stand guard outside the sheriff's house while the others go in. Hurry up with them strips, Spade. I'm arranging them. Well, they'll be careful about it. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm ready. You first, Barney. Sure. It's a long one. I'll draw. Well, another long one. That means you have the short one, Spade. Yeah. You'll watch outside while Barney and I go in. When should we pull this job, Ted? I'll meet you at that clump of trees behind the sheriff's house at midnight. <laughs> Somebody's in for a big surprise. Yes, Barney. Somebody is. That evening, the two outlaws made hasty but careful preparations for kidnapping the sheriff's daughter and eluding the sheriff's posse in order to pick up the cash for the stolen cattle. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger conferred with Tonto and Tad at their camp not far from town. You know what to do, Kimasabi? Uh-huh. I don't know. Don't miss with that knife. Uh, me not miss. I know I can count on you. Tad, have you written a note to Betty, the sheriff's daughter? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, what did you say? This is what you told me to say. Told her about tonight's plan and to stay overnight with her aunt to avoid risk. Good. Uh, me take note now? Yes, Tonto. It'll soon be time for me to meet the rustlers. Come, Scout. Me see you after midnight, huh? <laughs> yes, Tonto. If everything works as we planned, Tad will be free to go tomorrow. Thanks to you two. Get up, Scout! <laughs> met with Spade and Barney in the clump of trees behind the sheriff's house. Barney showed the masked stranger, whom he and Spade thought to be Tad Harrison, the note he had written to be left after the kidnapping. It threatened Betty, the sheriff's daughter, with death unless her father complied with the outlaw's demand that the posse be withdrawn in order to clear their way through rocky paths to the pay cache. Then as the moon hid behind a heavy cloud, the three crept quietly toward the sheriff's house. Breaking their sleep. Yeah. Ain't a light shown. Stand by this window, Spade. You can watch the inside of the house from here. Yeah. Barney and I'll go around to the front. And don't be long. Glad you're with me instead of Spade, Barney. You've got more nerve. Uh, Spade's cautious, that's all. Spade would like to collect the cash from the cattle buyer in one piece, Barney. What do you mean? Remember when we drew lots? Yeah. Spade made all three strips of paper long. He did? Yeah. And as long as we drew first, he could throw his strip away or break it short. Claim hours were long. What did he do that for? Well, he wanted to be sure to be chosen for outside duty. If this plan fails, it'll be the two of us inside that'll be trapped. Say, that's right. Be careful of that loose point. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, maybe Spade's freaking to double cross his Ted. We'll soon know. Maybe he's planning on something happening to us. Keep your gun ready. It is. Don't worry. If I thought Spade would double cross us. I'd riddle him in a minute. What is it? Spade's watching right outside that window. What'll we do? We've got to pass the window to get to the girl's room, Barney. Yeah? You pass the window first. You hear me whistle? Drop to the floor fast. Where'll you be? Watching Spade through the window. And here goes. What happened? Look. A knife. Where that double crossing pole cat? Tried to pin me with a knife, eh? Huh? I'll show him. Drop that gun, Barney. What? Drop it. Another double cross here, eh? Take this. Oh, my head. What's going on here? There's a prisoner for you, Sheriff. Mask. This is one of the men who started the prairie fire. You ain't sending me out alone, Ted. That double cross of Spade is in this as deep as I am. What? Don't stand there like a fool, Sheriff. I tell you, Spade's outside. He's as guilty as starting that fire as I am. Get after him. He'll escape. No, he won't. Spade's already been taken care of. He didn't double cross you, Barney. You double crossed him. Someone else threw that knife. But, it... but you've given the sheriff enough evidence to arrest you both. I should say he has. I lied, Sheriff. Why did I... you come here tonight, Barney? Why, I... You came to kidnap the sheriff's daughter so he wouldn't prevent you and Spade from claiming the cash for the stolen cattle. It's a frame up, I tell you, Sheriff. Sheriff, you'll find proof in Barney's pocket. 
A note he wrote threatening your daughter with death unless you complied. Oh, you mean you What about this, hombre, Sheriff? Ted Harrison. He didn't do any work, but he was willing to share in the cash. I'm not Tad Harrison, Barney. Of course he ain't. You said you were. No, no, Barney. You said I was. You and Spade. Here's a real Tad Harrison right here. He's right, Barney. You won't have any trouble getting Barney to tell you where to find the cattle now, Sheriff. Or the gang either. Mister, I don't know who you are, but I don't mind telling you this case had me stumped. I had a posse searching a patch for hoof prints. But after that dust storm, it'd take a miracle for me to find him. You mean the trail was covered by the dust? Clean as a whistle. Well, that low-down coyote. The masked man knew it all the time. You're wasting your breath, Barney. He's gone. Gone? But who is he? He's the Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.